Hey everyone, this is Saitam and in today's video I'm going to be walking you through the Cheat Engine minigames and I'm going to be showing you how to solve them. So first of all, to access the minigames, you have to go here and go on Cheat Engine Tutorial Games and you obviously want to attach to this process. So go here and that. So let's go to level one. And so in this level, we are tasked with destroying this target, but as you'll see, the ammo actually runs out faster than this target regens, right? So we don't have enough bullets to actually kill this target, right? So we can see a health bar here. And what that tells me is that we can probably find the health of this target and modify it to be one so that when we shoot it, we actually one shot it, right? So let's start by doing a unknown initial value for four bytes, damage the entity and do decreased value. Let's see, decreased value, damage it again, decreased value, damage it again, Decreased value, damage it again, decreased value, and I think it's this one. Let's see, damage it again. And it goes right back up, right? So this is probably what we want. So I'm going to modify it to one and damage it and see what happens. So that gets us past that level, right? So let's continue. So in this level, we have two enemies, right? And if we try to damage them, we can see that they deal much more damage than what we deal to them, right? So what we can do is that we can make our own shots be one shot, right? So let's start by looking for our health value and see what happens. So 94, first scan, take some damage, 90. And so that's us, right? So let's see, let's do what writes to this address and take damage. I'm actually gonna send it right here. Right? So this instruction pops up twice because we took two bullets, right? And REX is gonna be our base address, right? So let's see, let's try to look for one of these and see what happens, or actually the two of them, right? So let's do unknown initial value, first scan, I'm gonna damage both of them. Let's see, uh, increased value, so, or rather decreased value. Damage both of them again, decreased value, damage both of them again. And let's see, I think it's these two, right? So that takes damage, that one decreases, that one decreases too, right? So add these to our cheat table and let's see what finds, or rather what writes this address, right? So what writes this address and what writes this address? And let's see, if we damage them, this pops up here, here. Okay, so if we do show in this assembler, we can see that this same function is responsible for actually modifying the health of us and the enemy. So just like step nine, we need to figure out a way to distinguish between us and the enemy, right? So let's see what we did in step nine. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna take the address of REX. This is our player, right? So memory view, tools, basic data structures, paste that here. And I'm gonna actually add two more addresses here, extra address, extra address. So that's the enemy, right? Let's go here, REX, grab that address. Paste it here. Let's go back here. Rax. Again, grab that address. And right. And let's do define new structure. That's fine. So we're looking for something that signifies team. So we're looking for something that's different, right? So we're going to be looking at these red values right here. So this is probably the X, and that's the Y. This is something that I can't really make sense of. Let's go down here. That's health. That's probably max health. And that's that's different, but it doesn't really look like anything to me. So let's continue. And we see this, right? So we have a zero, a one, and a one. So this might be a flag that signifies team, and it probably is, right? So just like step nine, we're gonna use this flag to actually distinguish between our player and the enemy, right? So remember this offset, 70. So when you go to memory view, select this address, go to tools, and do auto assemble. Select the code injection template, and let's see. So before this subtraction takes place, we want to do a comparison, right? So CMP, and we're gonna do REX, because that's the base address, plus 70, that's the offset of the flag, right? And we're gonna compare it to one. So if this address is equal to one, we are gonna want to perform an insta-kill, right? So what we can do is that we can do another label here, because we can't just jump to something that doesn't exist, right? So I'm gonna do a label here, call it kill, and I'm gonna put it right after original code, right? So kill, 
And so basically, I'm going to move zero into the address of health, right? To basically set the health of the entity to zero. So I'm going to do mov rex plus 60 and move zero into it, right? And then I'm going to return, right? Because in the original code, we do a subtraction and then we return, right? Make sure to actually include this return because it could crash the game if you don't. So we'll do ret. And here, after the comparison, we actually want to do the conditional jump, right? So if this address or rather the value at this address is equal to one, we want to jump to kill, right? And if it's not equal, we're just gonna execute this, right? And while we're at it, let's actually get rid of this line by just commenting it out. And basically this will make our local player invincible, right? So execute. And if you go back to the game, let's see. So that and that's, and we didn't actually take any damage, right? And that's it, that's the level. So in this step, you're supposed to go on each and every single one of these platforms and turn them green, right? Without actually touching these entities that insta-kill you. And there are a couple of ways to solve this, right? So you can either teleport to the platforms, you can fly to them, or you can make it so you don't collide with the entities, right? And that's actually what we're going to do. So I'm going to first start by looking for the player, right? I don't exactly see a health here, so I'm going to start by looking for the coordinates, right? So I'm going to do an unknown initial value, and first scan, move to the right, increased value, increased value again, and I'm looking for the X here, right? Increased value again, let's do decreased value because I'm gonna to move to the left. Let's do increased value, make sure I don't die. So let's do some unchanged values. And let's see what we have. So these two are no good, right? So we have this, this, and all these, right? So I'm gonna do the first one and see if I can get anywhere from there. So let's see what rest this address, move to the right. So rex is this address, right? So I'm gonna take it, go to memory view, tools, and let's see data structures, right? Paste it in there, do new structure, and let's see. So 24 is the X, because if I move to the right, it changes, and, and 28 is the Y value, because if I jump, it actually goes down, right? And we can verify this, so if I just set it to negative one, we see that we go here, right? So what I'm looking for here is a flag that actually tells us that we are dead, right? So let's see. This gets set to one when we die. Let's actually verify it again, right? So one of these gets set to some value. We don't really know what, right? So let's start again, and I can see that this gets set to one, and so does this, right? So one of these is probably going to be our is dead flag or something, right? So I'm gonna add both of these to the cheat table, right? Add to address list, and it was 20, I believe, right? Let's see, double check, yep. Add to address list, go back to cheat engine, and so let's see what happens if we freeze the first one, right? So I'm gonna go back to the game, die, and see what happens. Okay, so I respawn and I actually die. It's just, I visually don't disappear. Okay, let's freeze the second one. So I disappear, but I don't die by the looks of it, right? And if I unfreeze this, you can see that I immediately respawn, right? So we can actually change this to is dead, or rather rename it, right? And now I can do what works to this address, go back to the game and see what happens. And so this instruction shows up and basically this is just moving one into this address, right? So this tells us that this is probably a flag that is later on checked throughout the game, right? So let's see what happens if we just knob this out. It does nothing, go back to the game and let's see. Okay, so I don't die, but, it's, but I'm invisible, right? So it's not exactly the most elegant solution, right? So I'm gonna restore this and just by looking around, this function does a lot of things, right? So this is a very big function. It probably handles all these particles when you die. It probably handles the flag and all that, right? So I'm gonna try to figure out what caused this function and I'm gonna try to make it so that this function never gets called, right? So we need to figure out what actually caused this function, right? And to do that, we can actually look at the call stack, right? And what the call stack is, is basically when a function is called, a sticky note is played on top of the stack, right? And this sticky note contains information about the function, like where in the program it was called from or any local variables and so on. Now, if that function calls another function, a new sticky note for that second function is placed on top of the first one. Now this process keeps going with new notes being added on top of the stack, right? So how can we find this call stack? Well, Cheat Engine makes it super easy for us. All we have to do is that we have to breakpoint this instruction, right? Go back to the game and die once and we can actually see that this gets hit, right? And we can then go to view, stack trace 
and this is our call stack, right? This is where we are right now, and it's not really relevant to us, right? Because we want to figure out where it was called from. And if I go to the other sticky note, like this sticky note before the sticky note, right? This is actually where the function was called from, right? So this is the call instruction, and this is setting up all the arguments for it, right? Now, if I scroll up, we can actually see that there is a test and a jump if equal to instruction, right? And if this comparison succeeds, we actually jump past the call, right? So I'm thinking, what if we just make this jump be not a conditional jump, right? What if we just make it an absolute value jump, right? So I'm just going to do JMP. And so basically, every time the game comes here, it's just going to jump past this call, and to this move instruction, right? So now if I go back to my game and hit an entity, you can see that I don't actually die. Like the entities don't realize that I'm colliding with them, right? So now we can actually just go through this level normally. And let's see, let's do a jump here. Okay, so since I'm bad at the game, I'm actually gonna cheat, right? So I'm gonna take the base address of the player again, which was, if I do this, what access says, RBX, let's see. Take it here, go back to memory view, tools, dice like data structures, and this one, paste it here. And let's see, so that's the X, right? If I go back to the game, increases, decreases, that's fine. And if I jump, the second one decreases, right? So that's the Y. So I'm actually gonna change this to negative one, here, 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 and let's see, time this. Okay, second the game, negative one again, jump here, wow, negative one, jump here, jump here, jump back up, go here, and let's see if I can get this last one. Should normally fall, yep. So now you'll see that you either had to teleport past them or you had to somehow figure out a way to bypass the collision, right? And if you actually go through, you can see that we win. And in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through actually bypassing the integrity check of this game.